In this video I'm going to take a look at the frame widget which is fundamental to the development of graphical user interfaces using TK Inter and Python. A frame is a rectangular region of the screen. It is mainly used as a geometry master for other widgets, i.e. it is a container widget. Now this means that you take a region, a rectangular region, which obviously could include a square region, and you put onto this frame, this region, widgets such as labels, such as buttons, such as entry widgets and so on. And the frame contains those other widgets. When the widgets have been added to a frame, you then add the frame to the window. Frame widgets are used to group other widgets into complex layouts. In other words, you can take a frame, you can add appropriate widgets to it, and then add the frame to the window. You can then create another frame, add widgets to that, and then add this new frame to the window, and you can position frames within the window. And therefore, you can build up complex graphical user interfaces using the frame widget. Padding between widgets can be provided by a frame widget. Now, this is where you want to produce a layout that looks professional, and many programmers will use a frame widget to separate groups of logically related widgets that appear on a graphical user interface. There are other ways of doing this, but it's important to see what many programmers use frames for. You can use things like Pad X and Pad Y to ensure that you have a professional layout, but many people will use a frame widget to achieve this more professional view of a graphical user interface. A frame class can also act as a base class when implementing compound widgets. This is where you decide you want to produce a subclass and you take the frame class as the base class or often called the superclass for a new class that you wish to develop where this new class will consist of many widgets that will be placed upon the graphical user interface. And this involves something referred to as inheritance which I will cover later in the playlist on TK Inter. For this video I'm going to be concentrating on this point here looking at how a frame which is a rectangular region of the screen can be used to contain other widgets and how we can place these widgets onto a frame and then place the frame onto a window. I'm going to use some schematic diagrams to convey the principles behind the use of a frame when devising graphical user interfaces using TK Inter and Python. Here you can see I'm starting off with a rectangular region. Now to this rectangular region I'm going to be adding widgets. So I'm going to create a label widget and then I'm going to position the label widget within the frame using the grid method and I'm going to show it here. Then I'm going to produce an entry widget and then I'm going to position the entry widget again using the grid method as you can see here. Then I'll add another label, then I'll add another entry box, another label, then another entry box and then a submit button or a button with the text set to submit as you can see. Now what we have here is a frame that clearly can take in somebody's first name, middle name, surname and a submit button and of course the submit button will have code attached to it which will perform the reading from the entry widgets. Now what I can also now do is produce another frame and to this frame I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to be adding a label, an entry box, another label, another entry box, another label, another entry box and then another button with the text set to submit. And clearly this is designed to read in the address from the user of the program that I'm hoping to build. Before I continue, let's concentrate on this frame for a moment and ask ourselves what have we done? Well we've added three labels, we've added three entry widgets and we've added a button widget. And so far in this playlist I've shown the addition of labels, entry widgets and buttons to a window. Here I've not done that, I've added nothing to the window, I've added them to the frame. So the frame is a container for other widgets. And if you look at the widget in this frame, what you can see is a logical representation of something that the user is going to do. What's the user going to do? They're going to enter the first name, middle name, surname, and then click the submit button. If you look at this frame, we've added three labels to it, three entry widgets and a button. And of course, these are logically grouped together because this frame has got the widgets on it that allow the user to enter somebody's 
address, their first line of the address, their town and their county, and then they hit the submit button. At no point have I added anything to the window yet. Everything's been added to the frame. So this frame is a container for these widgets. Let's just consider this label. Now, in code, I would have created this label. I would have created an instance of the label class, and I would have positioned it within the frame using the grid method, and clearly this label is in row zero, column zero. This is an entry widget. Now, I'd have created that using the entry class, and I'd have positioned it using the grid method within the frame at row zero, column one. Now, in previous videos in the playlist, I've discussed the grid method, but I've discussed the grid method with respect to a window. The same thing applies. You can think of a grid method as applying both to where you position things within a window and also where you position things within a frame. And here you can see we've got two frames and each label has been positioned using a grid method. Each entry widget has been positioned using a grid method. Let's now turn our attention to a window. And here you can see I have a schematic diagram of a window. And each of the frames is associated with this window in code. And I can position each frame within the window using the grid method. So I can move this to this position, which is clearly row zero, column zero. And the other frame, well, I'm going to move that to this position, which again is row zero, but this time column one. So what I've added to the window is the frame, not the individual labels and entry widgets. Two frames have been added to this window. But before I added the frames, I added the labels and the entry widgets and the button to a frame. And then the frames were added to the window. Because I've used frames, I can quickly reposition the frames within the window. So I can take the first frame here and put it in that position, which is row zero, column zero. The other frame, I can position it here, which is row one, column zero. So I can rearrange the frames quite readily. And of course, we can hopefully now begin to see the advantage of using frames. I can alter the layout quite quickly. I can build up the frames first and then decide where I want the frames to appear within the window. Let's consider one more example of positioning frames within a window. You can see I've built the two frames up again. And what I'm now going to do is to position this frame here, which is row zero, column zero. And the other frame I'm going to position here, which is row one, column one. So you can see I can alter the layout quite readily. In this video, we looked at the principle of the use of frames and how we can readily position various widgets on the screen by first of all placing the widgets within frames where the frames are containers. The next video in the playlist is going to look at the code that allows us to use some of these features of frames, how we can build up a frame that contains widgets and how then we can position the frames within the window and have a readily alterable graphical user interface because we're grouping widgets into logical groupings and then appropriately positioning them within the window. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?